So we're all used to desktop computers looking like this. And if you're a Windows user, this will be familiar to you. So I'm playing a YouTube video at 1080 and we're currently using 53 watts of power for the monitor and the computer. But imagine if your computer could look like this, or even this, and it's only going to cost you around 80 pounds. We're going to need a Raspberry Pi 5, which is out at the end of October, an SD card to hold the operating system, and a USB-C power supply. You may already have one of these, your mobile phone one might work, but there is a more powerful one on the Raspberry Pi website, which is due out again the end of October, that's officially supporting this but I'm going to use the Raspberry Pi 4, the old existing one, and a way of securing it to the back of the monitor. Now, I'm going to use one of these, which I've 3D printed, but you can get all sorts of ways of connecting a Pi to the back of a monitor. This is just a nice, neat way of doing it. So on the back of a monitor, you have visa mounts, which are these four screw holes here, and these are different distances apart, depending on what it is. So if it's a TV or a monitor and whatever size it is, you can see on this one, uh, we've got holes at seven and a half centimeters apart and also 10 centimeters apart. And it's the seven and a half that I need that line up on these. We then need to secure our Pi onto here. Now I'm gonna use uh, these little screw kits that I got with a Pi case ages ago. I'm gonna hold on to the other three while I put the last one in. There we go. Pop the Pi on top. And there are loads of different ways of doing this. Uh, and then I'm going to use these little columns to go on top of that. So you can see that's these four here. Now you can add little spaces in between this and the back of the monitor so that these don't scratch the monitor. I'm not really worried about that. So I'm just going to bolt it on as it is. Now you don't need a fan for this, but I would say it's better to have one, uh, especially if you're in a hot climate or you're using it for very long periods of time playing video or playing games or things like that. So I've got this one, uh, which was part of the case that all these little bits came from. I'll put a link in the description to all the bits. And it runs very quiet. And I've lost one of the screws, so I'm only gonna put three of the screws in. There you go. I've set this fan up to run on three volts, so the red cable is on the back pin there. If I move it to the front one, it's five volts. So five volts will be running faster and be more cooling but I like it to be nice and quiet. Uh, and so three volts works very well for me. Now, you'd need to work out which way to do this. So the HDMI cable will need to go into here. The power cable comes out of here. So I guess probably this configuration, uh, but you could do it this way if you wanted to, if the power's coming in from this side uh, and you want your USBs here. But I think I'm gonna keep it this way around. So let's pop it in with two screws. Again, this is exactly the same if you were doing this onto a TV. And uh, I'm just going to do diagonally. Obviously, you can use four screws if you want, but this is very light. And this bracket is designed to hold the weight of the TV. So two screws is going to be more than enough to keep that pie in place. And you can see it's held on nice and firmly. I've got my power cable I showed earlier on. So let's go in with that and you can see it's booting up already i've got a lovely short cable i can use which is micro hdmi to hdmi but you can also get uh, short hdmi cables or use one you've already got and you can convert those with a female to male micro hdmi and these work i use these most of the time but let's use this really short one so the hdmi is the one next to the USB-C, that's HDMI 1. You can run this Pi with dual desktop, I've got a separate video showing that. Now obviously, like anything, you can make this tidier. Uh, I'm just gonna tuck it in because it's behind the monitor here. Just pop that down a bit. And I can pop an SD card in and then spin it around. And I can add a Bluetooth speaker or some other way to get the sound. Obviously if you're using a TV, you'll have sound anyway. Let's just pair that. There you go, Bose Revolve and pair. And let's click on the speaker and enable that. Connected to Raspberry B. And let's play one of my YouTube videos to see how many watts we're using. And do exactly the same as before, full screen. And yeah, we're already on 1080. 
And with the monitor and the Pi, we're now only using 22 watts, so less than half. Now let's cover up that LG logo because uh, this is a Raspberry Pi all in one. Now there's obviously better ways of doing this. Uh, and I was going to spray paint it, but uh, I've run out of time. And I did try and get rid of the LG logo with a bit of isopropyl, but it didn't work. Because I've got one of these brass logos that you can stick on and uh, put it on somewhere near the middle. There you go, a Raspberry Pi 5 all-in-one computer. So just to revisit the power, uh, because it was showing quite a lot of watts before, but that was because I had the monitor and the Pi on at the same time. But just to show how low energy the Pi is, uh, so it's currently using three watts of power. If I start playing a video, so this video is my Raspberry Pi 5 video, which shows you performance of desktop uh, and also a bit of gaming and things in there as well. Uh, so this, let's just check it's running at 10. Yeah, so this is running at 1080 and let's see how much power. So the Pi is using six watts of power. So it's a fairer test when comparing it to the desktop PC to just show what the Pi is doing because it is so much less power uh, than an ordinary desktop PC. So check out this video for how the desktop performance is. It is surprisingly good. Uh, but I hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.